Let's talk about the changes made in the 2019 version of ACI 318. Before we talk about them, let's ask why. Why change? There can be myriad of reasons including but not limited to the following. New research either improves existing design or points to the unintended flaws in it. Failure of existing structures can also serve as the catalyst for the change. Changes in construction practices or introduction of new materials can also be the reason. Better analytical tools often leads to the removal of obsolete methods. In addition, preferences of industry at large can also lead to the changes. Let's move on to the changes itself. ACI 31819 has now included guidelines regarding the axial and shear stiffnesses to be used when analyzing RC structures under the factored loads. Moving on to the next change. For class C and class T pre-stressed flexural members with unbonded tendons, deformed bars were relied upon for crack control, but no spacing limits were imposed on these rebars. Now the spacing limit is there in the section 7.7.2.3. Another change that has been made in the code is regarding the structural integrity reinforcement. Structural integrity reinforcement has been added for cost in place one way slabs. It is intended to provide a buffer against disproportional collapse in case a portion of slab collapses. This provision is in line with what we already have for beams. Articles 7.7.1 and 7.7.2 have been graphically represented here. The article 7.7.7.3 deals with the supplies of continuous structural integrity reinforcement. The reinforcement should be spliced near supports and splices shall be class B tension lap supplies or mechanical or welded supplies as per the section. 25.5 The next change in the code is regarding the minimum required flexural reinforcement. This minimum required flexural reinforcement in one way or two way slabs for crack control has been now made independent of the grade of reinforcement. The reinforcement ratio of 0.18% of the gross area is now required for all grades of rebars. The court argues that the mechanics of cracking suggest that increased yield strength provides no benefit for control of cracking. If crack width or leakage prevention is a design limit stage, you are referred to ACI 224 or or ACI 350 for the recommendation. Guidelines related to the design of shear head reinforcement has been removed from the 2019 version of ACI 318. I am not sure why they have been removed. My guess is that industry does not use it because of the too much congestion in beam column joints. Single or multiple leg stirrups fabricated from rebars or headed shear stud reinforcement is preferred, especially the headed shear stud reinforcement because of the ease of placement. Another change in the 2019 version of ACI 318 is related 
to the calculation of punching shear strength when openings are closer to the column. In the earlier edition of course, the perimeter of critical section in punching shear was required to be reduced as per section 22.6.4.3 in case the opening was within the 10 edge from the face of column. Now the distance of harmful opening has been reduced to 4 edge. The article 22.6.9.9 has also been removed in the 2019 version of the code as the code no longer gives the guidelines related to shear heads. A recent research has been mentioned serving as a catalyst for these changes. Moving on to the next change, which has already been discussed earlier, the minimum area of flexural reinforcement is no longer dependent on the yield strength of rebars in the 2019 version of the code. Hence, the table 8.6.1.1 is no longer there. You are now required to provide 0.0018 times the gross area as the minimum area of flexural reinforcement in two-way slabs. As discussed earlier, the code argues that the mechanics of cracking suggest that increased yield strength provides no benefit for cracking control. If the crack width or leakage prevention is a design limit state, you are being referred to ACI 224R or the ACI 350 for the recommended reinforcement ratios. Moving on to the next change which is regarding the thick slabs such as mat and transfer floors. Even though these three provisions in both codes look the same but the figure they are referring to are different in both codes. Commentary of 8.7.4.1.3 also differ in both codes as seen here. The sentences highlighted in green are added in the 19 version of the code. The code now prescribes that the top bars of column strip be extended by at least 5 times the depth of member. The reason for extending the top rebars by at least 5 times the member depth is depicted in these figures. The extension of 0.3L will not intercept the shear crack in thick slabs leading to a brittle failure. These figures here are referenced in the section 8.7.4.1.3 discussed earlier in both codes. The difference in both figures is the minimum length of extension of column strip top bars in the 19 version of the code. No, you are required to provide an extension of at least 5 times the member depth. Another major change in the 2019 version of ACI 318 is the removal of direct design and equivalent frame methods for the design of two-way slab panels. I think most of the engineers do not prefer manual methods anymore because of the limitations in their design. 
and because it is much easier to perform FEM based analysis. This could be the only reason behind the removal of these methods.